Hello, and welcome to this edition of Fulton Justice. I'm your host, Yolanda Lewis, District Court Administrator for the Atlanta Judicial Circuit. This program is dedicated to providing you with resources, information, and a closer look at how our justice system works for you. Today's show is all about a new and free legal service to assist self-represented litigants in Fulton County. An individual's ability to represent him or herself and litigate without representation of counsel is a right granted under the Constitution, although not advisable. Under the Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution, federal and state criminal defendants are guaranteed the right to counsel in any matter before the court. In civil matters, the dynamics are quite different. There is no provision under the law automatically granting a litigant engaged in civil or domestic matters the right to an attorney, even if the person is unable to afford legal representation. Over the past three decades, the number of self-represented litigants have surged nationwide with reports indicating an 80 or 90 percent increase in family law cases. The increase of self-represented litigants in both federal and state courts often creates delays in an already overburdened court system. Although many courts now supply self-represented litigants with guides and instructions for completing forms and filing a complaint, there is no hard or fast solution to help citizens navigate the unique challenges that they will face when they elect to represent themselves. Stay with us as we discuss Fulton County's new free family law clinic and how it benefits the court and provides better access to justice for residents. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Fulton Justice. Joining us now is Tracy Johnson, Director of the Family Division with the Superior Court of Fulton County. Thank you for being here today, Ms. Johnson. Thank you for having me. So we are going to talk a little bit about the Free Family Law Clinic, which mm -hmm. is an exciting opportunity for us. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about your background because you've been with Fulton County for about seven months now? Eight, right. Eight mm -hmm. months, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, I started in courts at, at a very early age. Mm -hmm. I um, ended up in the mediation field and became a program director for several counties in South, more South Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing mediation and court administration for about 20 years now. So let's talk about the Free Family Law Clinic, mm -hmm. which is an exciting opportunity very. for um, our courts. We see so many people who choose or, or maybe choose but maybe not choose to represent themselves because mm -hmm. of financial hardships. So, so, so tell us a little bit about what the clinic is, um, how it's structured and what it will be doing. Well, you know, this started uh, as from a, a need, um, there was a sort of a gap in services mm -hmm. and the we have, Fulton County's always been sort of on the cusp of um, promoting access, meaningful access to all litigants. So the, the forms are available, and we have the free consultations, and we have the clinics. But what was, the piece what, that was missing was the um, being able to have somebody help them fill out the form. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times their information was incomplete, or they didn't know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So the idea of using law students to fill this gap came about. And the, the clinic will actually be assisting people if they need help with completing their paperwork. So it goes from they walk in, they can either um, have their entire packet completed that day or they're given a list of information they need to complete their, their filing so they can file. And this, this whole process really dates back before this law Absolutely. clinic. We have a family law information mm -hmm. center um, which offers other services to right. individuals coming in. So talk a little bit about how this now dovetails into what we already had available. It, it's just another layer. Mm -hmm. So we now we, what we have is um, an on-site family law information center that's open Monday through Friday. We staff that with attorneys Monday through Thursday. And we have the, the free consultation. This is 30 minutes. And then once a month we have the clinics. Mm -hmm. What this does is it just provides that additional layer of service, um, almost individual assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's sometimes difficult to have in a court system mm -hmm. is the individual attention. And this, this service does that because it takes people. We have three students right now, so they can help three people at a mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. 
And even if they're not, um, if the parties come and they're not there, they can make an appointment to come back um, on a day that they are there. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about our partners, but before mm -hmm. we do that, you know, I think the, the very critical piece is that this additional layer helps you serve more people. How many people do you see in the course of a year? We, there's, a, there's approximately over 1,000 walk-ins a month. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're talking probably 13,000 people walk into that office. So we're talking about even with the additional resources, we're still not able to reach every single person because you have over 1,000 people walking in for service every day. Right. I mean, right. every month. But, but not everybody needs this particular service. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does help those that do need that. So we always talk about the financial side mm -hmm. of how to make these programs work. Um, and I think that this program has a very exciting element to it where we didn't have to necessarily get a new grant mm -mm. or ask the county commissioners for more money. So let's talk about our partners and, and their role in helping this to come to fruition. It's really a creative innovation. Um, it is a partnership with John Marshall Law School and the Hispanic Bar Association. Mm -hmm. So they provide the uh, we have um, a professor that comes and oversees the students, his mm -hmm. third year law students, and they come as, and, and they benefit from this also. They mm -hmm. get hands, very valuable hands on experience mm -hmm. from this um, clinic, and the, then the people reserve, receive the services. So there, there's no cost to the, the county, to the litigants, to anybody. A lot of people, um, always uh, whenever they come in think that there's some type of requirement you have to have be qualified in order um, to right. receive certain services so let's talk about who would qualify for um, the service that you're offering um, with the, the law clinic we really have no we have no criteria for people that, that need assistance for, for any of our services mm -hmm. so they may live in a different county and they need they need some service in Fulton County certainly with the um, the law clinic it's helpful if they live in Fulton County if they're actually going to file they've actually helped people so far figure out that this is not the correct venue this mm -hmm. is not the place mm -hmm. they need to file so they can direct them and it actually saves them a lot of time there's not delay in their case because they mm -hmm. filed here and then later learn they need to file in a different county so that's an important aspect Absolutely. that we probably need to talk about I think um, we've said this so many times on this show and we talk about it all the time in court the court system is just a very complex place and it's mm -hmm. complex to really understand the processes and so we, do you see this often where people are fouling paperwork in Fulton County courts that really should be fouled in other places as they're trying to um, get get their case heard and, and get through the process? It, it happens a lot, not just in Fulton but mm -hmm. all over. There's, there's so many um, nuances to where you need to file this, you know, depending on where it was filed or where the children are. And, and there's so many different things. And, and there's there's also caveats to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that happens a lot. And then and then nobody can tell them that it's not in the right county. So then it has to you have to go to the first hearing before you even know. And that's 30 days from mm -hmm. the time that's filed. And so let's talk about um, the benefit. Now, we've talked a little bit about the benefits mm -hmm. to individuals who are seeking the service. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's talk about the impact on the court. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think um, people don't know if you're not in the court system is the slowdown, the mm -hmm. delay. Um, how that impacts not having being prepared or having the right information slows your court case down. So let's talk about how we uh, intend for this clinic to really have a positive impact on the flow of work in the court. Well, the idea I think actually came about because the judi judicial officers were seeing at that first 30-day status conference that the, the litigants weren't prepared. Mm -hmm. Their um, paperwork's incomplete and properly completed. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they can't really guide them as to what they need to do. And so then there's a lot of frustration mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so the litigants get frustrated that they can't move forward because they don't really know what to do. And this will help move that along. And then if you have attorneys coming in on the other side, if the paperwork's completed properly, then it makes the whole case move sm smoother and um, it's a lot more timely. So let's talk about um, the cases that you that you will see mm -hmm. in the domestic arena that will come through. Uh, are we talking about custody cases? Are we talking about name changes? What exactly are we intending um, to assist people with? Right now, we're concentrating mainly on divorce, modifications of child support and child custody. Legitimation is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, contempts. Now, if it's a highly complex case, um, people can still choose to represent themselves, but this is not necessarily the place for them. Mm -hmm. um, they just need some assistance with forms, but it, it's mainly just your average family cases. 
And so let's talk about we. This partnership is with the Hispanic Bar Association. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, we we see individuals and in come in all the time who have language barriers. Mm -hmm. So what's the significance of having the Hispanic Bar a part of this this conversation? I think that having the Hispanic Bar it, it's um, it's a good collaboration with the courts. Um, we have uh, the professors able to help those individuals and without the need of an interpreter mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. so we can start the conversation and um, it's good to get the rest of the community involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about the future of mm -hmm. this family law clinic. I, I think it is an exciting opportunity. I know some other jurisdictions have family law workshops and um, clinics that they are mm -hmm. hosting, but what do we see as the future of this of this clinic and how it will impact the folks that are walking our doors? I really hope that the other law schools will get on, get involved and, and become part of this so that we can have this full time on in our in our courts. Mm -hmm. You know, there's such a need for, especially in domestic cases, there are child support worksheets that have to be completed and those have to be done with the use of a computer and Microsoft Excel and not everybody has access mm -hmm. to that or has the ability to fill out those forms. So. If, if we had um, individuals there more to help people, then that we could provide that service every day. And, and that would be a wonderful thing for, for the mm -hmm. litigants. And just for people who would like to access this service, when, when are we hosting these law clinics again? They're every Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. If they come on a different day, say they come on Thursday, they're given the option. If they need help with forms, they can make an appointment, you know, just sign up for one of the time slots on the day that, that the students are there. Awesome. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for being here. And thank you for all of the work that you do um, to really help folks that are coming in um, to seek assistance and access to justice for our courts. Thank you. Up next, we'll have a discussion with attorney Bernadette Almas regarding self-represented litigants involved in family matters in Fulton County. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Our next guest, Ms. Bernadette Almas, is an attorney with A.B. Almas & Associates, a member of the Hispanic Bar Association and professor of John Marshall Law School, who also directs our family law clinic. Thank you for being here, Ms. Almas. Thank you for having me. So we're going to talk about this exciting opportunity that we have in partnership with John Marshall Law School, um, the Free Law Legal Law Clinic. But let's talk about you a little bit. You have been an attorney um, for a very long time and you've worked with a lot of uh, domestic cases in our courts and other courts across the metro area. So tell us a little bit about you. Well, I actually fell into family law, um, but I realized that when I fell into it, I actually liked it mm -hmm. and realized uh, that the community that I serve is a very underrepresented community. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually started picking up on some issues that were actually very important and obviously Fulton County saw them to be important and so there was a an idea that was born. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting back to the clients that I serve and what I do, um, I do everything from, you know, divorces, both, you know, the high asset as well as the people, just your regular everyday um, families that are going through a divorce. Uh, some people have a lot, some have a little bit, but ultimately it's all the same mm -hmm. in terms of the emotional pain, driving them through the process, mm -hmm. you know, guiding them through the process is a very, um, how should I say this, it's, it's a very important uh, assistance mm -hmm. for the person going through the court system Absolutely. and going through the divorce because you're not only lawyer, you're lawyer, you're friend, you're mm -hmm. therapist, you're Right. Almost everything to the people right. when you're helping them go through the system, Absolutely. go through the process. Well, I want to talk about this um, free family law clinic that we have. Um, you you were one of the founding. I remember sitting at the table with you and, and we were talking about how to start this. And so tell us a little bit about how you got involved um, and your, your role in making this uh, a really great program. Well, um, actually, I, I have to give credit to Fulton County. It started with Judge Wright, who mm -hmm. was very active, very proactive in wanting to know what the concerns were. She mm -hmm. wanted to know how Fulton County could better serve the community. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know 
what the issues were, not only with the community at large, but with the diverse uh, growing population. Mm -hmm. And so she called a meeting and I was invited to that meeting as well as several other mm -hmm. um, people. And we talked about how the pro se litigants were, you know, falling, you know, behind in their mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. And of that was born the idea of putting together a legal clinic to help them help the litigants through the system. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really unique. You you were talking about um, what the court can do to respond to the, the changing needs of the, the community and the populations that we serve. And I think it's very important to note that this, um, this law clinic has a very important aspect um, that provides a little more access to justice than than usual because we it works with interpreters. So talk a little bit about how important it is not only to have a family law clinic like this, but to also have a component where you have the ability to help individuals who have um, limited English proficiency. Well, um, there's there are several components to that or answer for the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. The first one is. It's almost educating the people who are from other countries because they're not familiar with the legal system here. Mm -hmm. There's a misconception that um, if they come to court, the court will appoint an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come through the system then and they're able to get to the Flick office, we have interpreters. Obviously, we're bound by the, as a clinic, we're bound by the rule on the use of interpreters. So anybody who's serving a function for the county has, um, has to have an interpreter. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether I speak another language or not, I have to use an interpreter as well. Right. So that we understand what the litigants need is, what they're saying to us, and that they understand what is required of them what paperwork is necessary, and that they understand the paperwork that they're filing with the court. Mm -hmm. So when they come through the clinic, um, Fulton County, let me just add, we were talking about what one of the needs mm -hmm. was, and I'm kind of backtracking. Um, there was several years ago, probably in my first years of practice, right. I remember coming to court and sitting here and waiting, you know, hours for mm -hmm. an interpreter. And um, Fulton County has been the leader by far to add um, several interpreters yeah. full time, and so now right. when the practicing, you know, the private attorneys come in and practice in Fulton County, mm -hmm. uh, reserve it, you know, reserving an interpreter is so much easier. Um, accessibility is so much easier mm -hmm. um, with the online system that mm -hmm. was implemented, awesome. and so it's it's the the wait time is slim to none mm -hmm. and most of the time if you, the interpreters are there before the attorneys are there so oh. that's a really good experience to have yes, yes. and it moves the system it moves the cases through the system um, in terms of the litigants it helps us in the clinic um, with them understanding what they're doing mm -hmm. um, and, and there's their paperwork is in order mm -hmm. the lag time um, for the judicial officers is is less. It's cut down. And that's ultimately the goal, is mm -hmm. to make sure that the cases um, are moving through the system, and they're moving through the system as smoothly as possible. Now, we, we talked a little bit about um, delays that, that you experience whenever you have a domestic case and, and you choose, or maybe not even by choice because you can't afford a lawyer, um, to come in and represent yourself. So let's talk a little bit about what does a delay mean? Does that mean you didn't have the paperwork filled out appropriately? You didn't know where to file the paperwork? What does, what does, what, mean? What does the delay mean? Generally, um, the process, um, a lot of people think that if they just get some papers filed with the court that mm -hmm. somehow the papers are going to, you know, end up with the opposing party. And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there needs to be an explanation to the litigant, um, at the one beginning the case, or the for those who are non-lawyers, mm -hmm. those who are starting the case, or the plaintiffs, um, have to have those documents served on the other side. Right. Um, and so explaining the process to them, kind of walking, through, walking them through the process is part of what the law students do. Um, they take them in. When they actually leave the, the clinic, the litigants leave the clinic, they leave with their paperwork file ready. And when I mm. say file ready, that means that their mm -hmm. complaint, their, mm -hmm. their summons, their complaint, and their verification are all in order. All the copies are made. The 
paperwork is ready to be mm -hmm. served. Mm -hmm. So the clerk literally just has to take it, take their money or their um, order for mm -hmm. pauper affidavit mm -hmm. um, and, and file it and, and get the ball rolling so that when the litigant appears at the 30-day status conference, there's really not much left to do there if their children involved in a proposed parenting plan mm -hmm. is already filed with their paperwork uh, child support worksheets are filed at very least you know the very basic numbers mm -hmm. are in there now if there's anything more complex than that then right. Right. after the hearing they can come back or they can go to the mediating uh, the mediators who are on standby at Fulton County. So let's talk about, uh, and as we kind of wrap up uh, our conversation, I want to talk about the future of the Family Law Clinic and just get your take on um, the direction you think we're going in domestic cases where we have self-represented lit litigants involved. The direction, I think um, the goal is for next year, uh, the students to actually be representing um, the litigants in their status conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would help move the cases even faster if mm -hmm. there's someone there uh, guiding the arguments that need to be made um, for the litigants. We can help them get their paperwork mm -hmm. ready, we can get them ready for their 30-day 30, 30 status conference, mm -hmm. but in terms of how they present their information and how they you know, fashion their position mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is definitely something that I think the, the third years practicing under the third year practice act or practice rule would be able to assist them w uh, in the 30 day status conference. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of the cases can be resolved at the 30 right. day. That's true. And that I think if that, uh, if we can accomplish that goal, I think Fulton County would be moving a lot more cases with the assistance or the smaller cases mm -hmm. with the assistance of the law students. And not to mention the externs are getting real world experience in a court courthouse um, and potentially in a courtroom and that makes all the difference uh, do you believe whenever you um, strike out to, to practice on your own as a lawyer? The students right now are going to be about a, they're going to be functioning as a maybe a, a, a new lawyer at a second year experience level. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say that, it's not just the courtroom experience, the real people experience, mm -hmm. the human experience, because they're sitting there and they're talking to clients, doing an assessment, mm -hmm. figuring out exactly what it is, because right. The litigants don't know what right. they need. They'll come right. in and say, well, I need a, you know, a custody battle. And then the, the, the students will start asking questions and they find out, well, first of all, there's something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> first of yeah. all, we got to figure out what your position is in right. the case. Are you the legal parent? Right. Are right. you not the legal parent? Let's let's figure that out first. So then we'll talk about yeah. moving forward onto the I custody. I think that's amazing that they're getting good good experience. So we'll pre we'll appreciate you. Sure. Ste you know, ste spearheading this opportunity for them to get some real world experience. Well, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the opportunity, and I, I love seeing them light up when yeah, they can absolutely. identify those big issues. And they've yeah. had some big, yeah, pretty big so stuff far. come through. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for being here, and thank you for everything that you do um, for our court system. And we're looking forward to great things from our Family Law Clinic. Thank you. Today we discuss the initiation of the Free Family Law Clinic and the benefits to our citizens and our court system. Our judicial system has an obligation to provide access to justice for all citizens, which includes providing assistance to persons who can afford representation and those who cannot. As the number of self-represented litigants continue to increase, we recognize the significant need to provide them with legal information as they attempt to navigate the court system. The new Family Law Clinic is held each week, Tuesday and Wednesday, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Family Law Information Center in the Justice Center Tower. This building is located at 185 Central Avenue, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. You may also contact the office by phone at 404-612-2789 or by visiting the Family Law Information Center website at FultonCourt.org. Special thanks to our guests today, and thank you for joining us for Fulton Justice. I'll see you next time.